If you are reading this on a computer of any kind, odds are good that the words on the screen are all encoded using something called UTF-8. UTF-8, or Unicode Transformation Format 8-bit, is put simply a format for encoding and storing text, one which allows for far more text characters than the older ASCII encoding, which could only show a total of 95 printable characters. And UTF-8 is quite simply everywhere. Nearly every major computing operating system heavily uses UTF-8 for handling text. Likewise, it is the standard for websites. Close to 100% of all web pages explicitly use UTF-8 for the text on the page. If you ever want to test that, go to a website, right-click on it, do a little view source, and then up near the top, it'll say character set equals UTF-8 in almost every website you will go to. Now, an argument could be made that UTF-8 is one of the most successful and widely adopted standards in all of computer history, but this almost wasn't the case. In fact, UTF-8 was, UTF was created at the very last possible moment, and it was first implemented in a computer system that most people don't even know existed. So, let's, let's go back to the beginning here. In the early 1990s, text encoding was an issue. While solutions for extended character sets beyond simple ASCII characters existed, they were less than ideal, to put it mildly. The most popular solution, known as UTF-1, aka ISO 10646, suffered from serious performance issues and often caused significant problems with software which used plain ASCII text, including Unix file system paths. Now, having a character encoding on a Unix system that could cause problems with Unix file systems was not good. That obviously is a problem. So, a new type of text encoding was needed. In 1992, XOpen, originally known as the Open Group for Unix Systems, a consortium of Unix vendors which included Sun, Hewlett Packard, AT&T, IBM, and several others, they set about the task of selecting a proper text encoding standard to be used across all of the Unix world. The proposal that gained the most traction was known as FSS-UTF also known as File System Safe Universal Character Set Transformation Format. Just, just rolls right off the tongue, right? The, this proposal was both faster than the old text encoding standard and, as the name suggests, <laughs> that amazingly long name, it was File System Safe, which was a huge win. Which brings us to September 2nd, 1992, sometime in the early evening, the X Open Group was meeting officially in Austin, Texas, to formally decide on the file encoding standard that they would bless. Looking to get a little feedback from the on the proposal, some members of the X Open Group made a call to two legendary programmers, Ken Thompson and Rob Pike, who were working on the Plan 9 operating system project at Bell Labs in New Jersey. Now, a little background for the uninitiated. Ken Thompson was one of the creators of Multics, Unix, the B programming language, which was the predecessor to C, and a bunch of other accomplishments. Absolute legend. Rob Pike, also a Unix programmer, was the co-creator of Blit, writer of multiple Unix and programming books, and the creator of the first Unix windowing system. I mean, to call these two legends in, this, in the world of computing would be perhaps a bit of an understatement. These two were currently working together on a research operating system at, at Bell Labs called Plan 9, an attempt to fix some of the perceived shortcomings of Unix by the creators of Unix itself. It was very cool. So what happened next? After Ken Thompson and Rob Pike received that phone call, what happened? Luckily, we have a detailed account written by Rob Pike himself. Quote, We had used the original UTF from ISO 10646 10 to make Plan 9 support 16-bit characters, but we hated it. <laughs> We were close to shipping the system when, late one afternoon, I received a call from some folks, I think at IBM. I remember them being in Austin, who were in an X-Open committee meeting. 
They wanted Ken and me to vet their FSS slash UTF design, that big giant file system safe proposal we talked about earlier. Now, when they're at, when you ask two legendary engineers for your input, you can, you can kind of guess what happens next. Quote, Ken and I suddenly realized there was an opportunity to use our experience to design a really good standard and get the XOpen guys to push it out. We suggested this, and the deal was, if we could do it fast, then okay. So, so that's right. Ken and Rob had some ideas, and the XOpen folks agreed to listen to those ideas if they could get, get them something fast. And by fast, they meant like, like immediately, right? Right this moment, because the XOpen team were quite literally all gathered in Austin to decide on this right then. <laughs> so Ken and Rob did what any good programmers would do when placed on an almost impossibly tight deadline and needed to come up with an amazing idea that could change the course of computing for decades to come. They went out to grab some grub. <laughs> Quote, so we went to dinner. <laughs> Ken figured out the bit packing, and when we came back to the lab after dinner, we called the XOpen guys and explained our scheme. We mailed them an outline of our spec, and they replied saying that it was better than theirs. <laughs> I don't believe I ever actually saw their proposal. I know I don't remember it. And how fast could we implement it, they asked. I think this was a Wednesday night, and we promised a complete running system by Monday, which I think was when their big vote was. Now remember, this was back in 1992, which means while laptops and such certainly existed, most people, even legendary programmers, did not have any sort of mobile portable computers like that. Certainly not the kind you could take to a restaurant. So what, pray tell, did they write their new encoding design on? A placemat from a New Jersey diner. Seriously, quote, UTF-8 was designed in front of my eyes on a placemat in a New Jersey diner, <laughs> end quote. The boys, Ken and Rob, now had just a few days to get all of this done before the big vote on the new text encoding standard, and they sure as heck didn't waste any time. They got back from dinner, placemat in hand, and got to work, quote, so, th so that night, Ken wrote packing and unpacking code, and I started tearing into the C and graphics libraries. The next day, all the code was done, and we started converting the text files on the system itself. By Friday, sometime, Plan 9 was running, and only running, what would be called UTF-8. We called the XOpen guys, and the rest, as they say, is slightly rewritten history. <laughs> so they converted. This is true. They converted entire operating system over to a brand new, just designed the night before on a placemat text encoding format in less than two days. Now, here's the rough timeline just to make sure this is drilling home. Wednesday evening, <laughs> they go to dinner at a New Jersey diner. Ken sketches out the idea on a placemat. Wednesday night after dinner, coding begins. The next morning, Thursday morning, coding is complete. Friday, that very next day, the entire Plan 9 operating system is now using that format. And on Monday, the XOpen group votes to use Ken and Rob's new encoding design. On Tuesday, September 8th, 1992, at 3.22 a.m., <laughs> yeah, Mere hours after the official vote to accept their text encoding design, Ken Thompson sends out the following email regarding Plan 9 now using UTF-8. Quote, the code has been tested to some degree, and we should be in pretty good shape. We have converted Plan 9 to use this encoding and are about to issue a distribution to an initial set of university users. That's right. Ken and Rob got a call asking for feedback on a Wednesday. By the next Tuesday at 3 a.m., they were ready to ship a version of their Plan 9 OS with all those changes, and their designs had been voted on by the largest Unix companies in the world. Think about this for a second. Think about this. The vote happened hours after the vote happened. 
Ken wasted no time and said, hey, we're going to ship this right now, which means Plan 9, Plan 9 OS was the first operating system to use UTF-8, which was impressive all by itself. And also note that little thing he said here, the code has been tested to some degree and we should be in pretty good shape. They sketched it out on a <laughs> on a diner <laughs> little little uh, uh, placemat and, and and coded it. When was there any time to test it? I mean, this these guys were hardcore. These guys were legends, absolute legends. They just just powered through it, and they're like, "Yep, that's pretty good." Do run run a couple of tests, check it out. Yep, yep, yep. Seems all right. <laughs> There wasn't exactly a, 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 a Q&A team running a set of uh, basic functionality tests to sign off on this. You know what I mean? These were just two legendary programmers saying, you know what? This whole operating system that we just we just conceived of parts of it a few days ago, it's good to go. We wrote it overnight. It's fine. <laughs> now, now, what about that placemat? Considering the vast impact of UTF-8 on the world of computing, whatever happened to that original design document, a.k.a. the placemat, it would certainly be of historic significance. Um, now, as, as Rob said, quote, I very clearly remember Ken writing on the placemat and wish we had kept it. So let this be a lesson to all of the programmers out there. Keep all of your doodles your notes, your sketches that you make for your projects. You never know when one of those projects will become critical to the entire world, making your quick sketch worthy of being in a museum, especially if it's on a placemat from a diner in New Jersey. <laughs> this this article originally ran over on the Lunduke Journal at lunduke.locals.com uh, some time back. If you want to get the articles as they come out, like right away that second, go to lunduke.locals.com and sign up. You can just grab a free account and you'll get notified of everything as it rolls on out. There's stuff happening every week. New articles, stuff like this that goes into the some of the untold history and some of the lesser told tales, um, big in-depth reporting pieces, some of the, some of really some of the the most in-depth investigative journalism that's happening in the tech world today is happening over at lunduke.locals.com right now. So head on over there. Plus, we have fun podcasts. Plus, we're just a fun group of people to hang out with. So head on over, lunduke.locals.com. Grab a free account. Hang out with us. Have a good time. Enjoy the podcast. Enjoy the articles. If you want to support the work I do by, by pitching in a few bucks, it is definitely very much appreciated. And I'll try and try and pay that back to you by providing some extra goodies all your way. There's lots of cool exclusives, books, and whatnot that all, all the subscribers get. All right, everybody. I'll talk to you later.